Hey everyone, you know as the global demand for oil continues to grow, we need larger and larger oil tankers to transport oil to where it's needed. With unbelievable specs and world record breaking sizes, oil tankers are built to carry millions and millions of barrels of oil to countries across the globe. So join me for today's video. I'm going to take a look at 15 of the largest oil tankers in the world. Number 15. TI Class Super Tankers all right, starting off the list is not just one, but an entire class of massive oil tankers. In fact, they are the largest oil tankers in service today, as well as some of the biggest tankers that have ever existed, period. The TI class is comprised of TI Africa, TI Asia, TI Europe, and one more, but we'll get to that one a little later on in this video. The TI component of their name comes from their operator, Tankers International LLC. All four tankers were built by Daewoo Shipbuilding and Marine Engineering, and they're the first ULCCs or ultra-large crew carriers to be built in 25 years. So when these super tankers made their debut, it created quite the stir. TI Europe was originally called Hellespont Tara, has a gross tonnage of 441,000 tons, and is the fastest of the four. TI Asia was originally named Hellespont Alhambra, and the same gross tonnage as TI Europe, and has since been converted into a floating storage and offloading vessel. TI Africa, originally called the Hellespont Metropolis, underwent the same conversion and is now called FSO Africa. These ULCCs have marked a resurgent in extremely large tankers, and pictures of them don't do justice to these things. To call them large is an understatement. The TI class super tankers are massive by every definition of the word. Number 14. Seawise Giant. We've talked about this one a lot on this channel. When it comes to iconic oil tankers, Seawise Giant is probably the most iconic one around. This colossal oil tanker was once the king of the seas, but has long since been laid to rest. This massive tanker made its debut in the late 1970s and was constructed by Suatomo Heavy Industries, who's no stranger to constructing larger-than-life oil tankers. Seawise Giant was classified as a ULCC, so it was already amongst the biggest tankers in the world. However, when it came to size, Seawise Giant really was the biggest of the big, boasting several world records. This tanker had the greatest deadweight tonnage ever recorded. When fully laden, the displacement was just over 657,000 tons, a displacement that is unrivaled even today. And with a length of 1,504 feet, a beam of 225 feet, and a draft of 80 feet, CY's Giant was a sight to behold as it made its way across the water. This tanker was in service until 2009, and it made its way into the scrapyard in 2010. But its legend lives on, a tanker of many names, such as Yahr Viking, the Happy Giant, and Nock Nevis. Seawise Giant was the definition of large, and puts a lot of other tankers to shame when it comes to size. Number 13. Belamia the honor of being the second largest oil tanker the world has ever seen goes to a tanker called Belamia. The tanker had a gross tonnage of just over 274,000 and was operated by the Shell Maritime Society of France. The tanker was a ULCC tanker, and it was constructed by Chantier de l'Antique. It boasted a length of 1,359 feet, and Balamia served the oil industry well from 1976 to 1986, when ULCCs were in their prime, and the tankers just seemed to get bigger and bigger with every passing year. However, during its time in service, the oil market saw a steep decline, so this impressively large tanker was laid up in 1984 in Norway, as many ULCCs were. The decision to layer up was twofold. Oil markets' demands were one part of the decision. The other was that she couldn't operate in a lot of low-key areas because she was simply too big. So her service years were cut short. However, during her years in service, her jaw-dropping size was a memorable image for anyone lucky enough to see her in action. Belamia found her final resting place in South Korea, where she was scrapped, but to this day, Belamia remains one of the largest tankers to ever traverse the seas. Number 12. Pierre Guillemot If you've noticed some similarities between Pierre Guillemot and the previous tanker on this list, Belamia, it's because they share the same genes in tanker genetics. These two massive tankers are what's called sister tankers, although Belamia wins the prize for size. But Pierre Guillemot holds its own when it comes to huge tankers, with a gross tonnage of just over 274,000 and a length of 1,359 feet. This one is a Battleus class super tanker and is one of only four built in that class. It was built in 1977 and during its service, it was operated by Elf Aquitaine. This tanker was named after the French politician of the same name, an honor that not very many tankers have. 
However, even though the tanker had a memorable namesake, it had difficulty navigating some really important passages given its size. Pierre Guillemont could not navigate through the Panama Canal nor the Suez Canal, so her port service was pretty limited. In 1983, the tanker was sold to the Hyundai Corporation and renamed Ulsan Master, but the tanker didn't serve long under that name. It was scrapped in the same year, and now both Pierre Guillemont and Bellamia rest in peace together in wherever it is that tanker souls go once they leave the seas. Number 11. DHT Colt Built by the famous, at least famous in the tanker industry, Daewoo Shipping and Marine Engineering Corporation, DHT Colt is a VLCC, or Very Large Crude Carrier. The tanker was built in 2018 and boasts a double hull. Furthermore, because the tanker is fairly recently built, it takes advantage of some pretty amazing marine technology advancements that previously built tankers lack. For example, the tanker is completely gearless, plus it produces lower carbon emissions than a lot of its counterparts without sacrificing efficiency or speed. DHT Colt is operated by THT Management, an independent crude oil tanker company. It sails under the Hong Kong flag and has some pretty impressive specs. The tanker is 1,102 feet long and has a carrying capacity of 163,000 tons. It travels at a top speed of 11.2 knots, but the tanker's real bragging rights comes from its technology. As the world moves towards lower carbon emission solutions, tankers like DHT Colt become a beacon of cleaner, more sustainable tankers. This tanker might not be the largest tanker on this list, but it's one of the most technologically advanced, which is impressive given its size. Number 10. Eagle Trader Although the name of this next tanker might have you craning your neck upward to the sky, Eagle Trader is very much seabound. This tanker is a VLCC and was built by Mitsui Engineering and Shipbuilding in 2018. This tanker has a special double engine, which allows it to run on two types of fuel. It's able to run on standard ship fuel as well as methanol, which is a pretty cool feature. But since this is a video about size, let's take a look at Eagle Trader's size. This massive tanker has a deadweight capacity of 312,000 tons, plus it measures in at 1,112 feet long. So it should come as no surprise that given its capacity and length that Eagle Trader is one of the largest tankers that's currently in service. This tanker sails under the Japanese flag and is operated by MOL Tank Ship Management. Pictures of this thing in open water show just how big it really is. Plus, its red and black exterior make it really easy to spot on the open waters. And it just looks cool. Number 9. Globetick Tokyo and Globetick London Globetick Tokyo and London are sister ships. As such, their specs are so similar that they can be talked about together. They both have the capacity for 3.6 million US barrels, so you better believe they're both really big. As sisters, they were both built by the same builder, Ishikawajima Harima Heavy Industries of Kure, Japan. They were both owned by Globetick tankers, and they were scrapped very close together as well. Globetick London was scrapped in 1985, and her sister followed suit in 1986. They have a slight variance in deadweight tonnage, though. But when I say slight, I mean slight. It's negligible. The only reason the difference in deadweight tons matters is because when Globetick Tokyo was laid in 1972, it was the largest supertanker in the world. However, Globetech London came in and swept that title away from her sister when she launched in 1973, boasting an additional 276 deadweight tons. So although the variance hardly seems worth mentioning, it was enough to seize a title. In any case, they are two of the largest tankers ever built, and while in service they carried more than their fair share of oil. And although they've since been scrapped, these sister ships still reign supreme when it comes to massive tankers. Number 8. Burge Emperor and Burge Empress You know, it seems like tankers like siblings, because here are another set of sister ships. Burge Empress and Burge Emperor are classed as twin sister ships, although one has much more masculine-sounding name. The tankers were both built in Japan in 1975, and although they're called twins, they're clearly fraternal instead of identical. Burge Emperor had a gross tonnage of 203,000, while Burge Empress had a gross tonnage of 198,000, so the Emperor trumps the Empress on that front. But the Burge Empress had a longer time in service, so she wins when it comes to lifespan. They both had the same length at 1,252 feet, so they tie when it comes to length. Now, if I was to award one of these sister tankers with an overall prize, I'd give it to the Empress. Although the Emperor had a slightly larger gross tonnage, the Empress served for eight years longer than her sibling, and since tankers are built to serve, a longer life trumps a slightly higher gross tonnage, in my humble opinion. So it's Burge Empress for the win, although both these tankers sit proudly amongst the biggest ever built. 
Number 7. Esso Atlantic Esso Atlantic is a world record holder. At the time of completion, she was just one of seven tankers with a deadweight capacity that crossed the half million ton mark. The tanker had a deadweight capacity of 516,000 tons, so you better believe that any tanker with a deadweight capacity that exceeds half a million is one behemoth beast. Esso Atlantic was built by Hitachi Zozen Corporation from Ariake, Japan. The tanker was operated by Esso Tankers Incorporated, and although the tanker could haul around some pretty impressive loads, it couldn't get around so easily. As this is a problem with so many massive tankers, a lot of the world's canals are simply too narrow for these ultra-large crude carriers to traverse. Esso Atlantic was no exception. The tanker couldn't get through the Suez Canal, the Panama Canal, nor the English Channel, so it was pretty limited. It came into service in 1977 and served until 2002. However, given the tanker's limited navigational abilities, it was transferred to the Bahamas in 1983. Esso Atlantic served there until it was eventually sold to shipbreakers for scrap. And given the tanker's size, there was a lot of scrap to be had when she was finally retired from service. Number 6. SS Torrey Canyon all right, since a lot of super tankers can't make their way through important channels because they're just too big, let's take a look at a large tanker that can actually traverse some of these important channels in the world. The SS Torrey Canyon was specifically built to traverse the Suez Canal. As such, the tanker was classified as an LR2 Suez Max class of oil tankers. The Suez Max tankers could go where the other, bigger counterparts couldn't, and as such, they were all essential parts of the tanker world. And even though the SS Torrey Canyon was small enough to traverse this canal, she wasn't small by any means. She had a deadweight capacity of 118,000 long tons of crude oil. She had a length of 974 feet and could reach a top speed of about 20 miles an hour. The SS Torrey Canyon first launched in 1958 and was owned by Barracuda Tanker Corporation. She was built in the Newport News shipbuilding yards, and although her real claim to fame should have been her ability to get through the Suez Canal while still carrying an impressive load, she unfortunately has another, less savory claim to fame attached to her name. In March 1967, SS Torrey Canyon ran aground, causing a pretty horrific natural disaster. In fact, her accident won her the title of the largest vessel ever to be wrecked at that time. Sadly, she sunk during the ordeal, so her service years were cut short. Number 5. SO Northumbria As with all things, some tankers pave the way for other, bigger tankers to come along, which is exactly the case with the SO Northumbria. This large tanker was the very first one in a series of very large crude carrier ships. This tanker debuted in 1969 and was built by Swan Hunter. And although this tanker is a little older than a lot of massive tankers, its age didn't sacrifice anything in the way of size. So, when SO Northumbria was first launched, it was the largest vessel to have been built in Britain at that time. So, not only was it the largest tanker to launch itself from British shores, it was the largest vessel, period. The size of the tanker earned it the nickname Big Geordie, and the nickname was well-deserved according to its supersized specs. SO Northumbria was 1,143 feet long and had a gross tonnage of over 126,000. Its beam was 170 feet and the tanker had a draft of 84 feet. It traveled at a top speed of 18 miles an hour, which doesn't sound very fast, but given the tanker's size, 18 miles an hour is actually pretty impressive. SO Northumbria was created to carry crude oil, specifically from the Persian Gulf. However, the tanker encountered more problems throughout her years in service than anyone could have foreseen. Right from the start, her hull cracked, and from there it just seemed to be a slew of repairs with this super tanker. So much so that her operators feared for its safety. They were afraid something would go wrong and this behemoth tanker would cause an equally behemoth oil spill. So the tanker was retired in 1982, far sooner than initially expected. She was broken up in Taiwan after only 12 years in service, but as one of the earliest massive tankers, she paved the way for the super tankers that followed. Number 4. Prairie Al. Every tanker in the Battleus class of super tankers are all enormous in their own right, and as the last tanker in the class, Prairie Al is no exception. This massive tanker was built by Chantier de l'Antique in 1979, and it was built for the National Navigation Company. Her size is comparable to other tankers in her class, with a length of 1,359 feet and a draft of 93 feet. However, Prairie Al is the only oil tanker in her class to serve for more than 10 years, so she's the longest-running tanker in the Battleus class. The tanker first launched on September 21, 1979, and holds the title of the third biggest ship ever constructed. 
It should also perhaps be granted another title, the tanker with the most names during service. Prairie Al is the name she's most remembered by, but the tanker also went by Sea Brilliance in 1985. Hella Foss in 1986, and Sea Giant, not to be confused with Seawise Giant, in 1997. The tanker saw a lot of different ports of registry while in service, including La Havre, Panama City, Perawes, Monrovia, and many others, so this tanker wasn't just big, it was a real globetrotter. In any case, this super tanker met the same fate that so many tankers do. In 2003, to the scrapyard it went. Prairial was broken up in the Gandani shipbreaking yard in Pakistan, but the tanker's size still ranks right up there with the very biggest of them. And no matter what you call her, Prairial, Sea Brilliance, Hella Foss, or even Sea Giant, a super tanker by any other name is still a super tanker. Number 3. Chevron Voyager Series most of the massive tankers of yesteryears are no longer in service. We can only look at pictures and the odd video if we really want to take in the sheer size and volume of these super tankers from the 1970s and 80s. However, there are still some pretty big tankers in service today, and although they might not hold the boastworthy record-breaking titles that some historic tankers do, they're still really, really big. Enter Chevron Voyager series. This series has three tankers in its fleet, and they're all VLCCs. Each one of the tankers can haul around 2 million barrels of oil apiece, so even though they don't have the jaw-dropping stats that tankers like Seawise Giant do, they're still massive compared to most vessels. The Chevron Voyager series is comprised of Pascagoula Voyager, Houston Voyager, and San Roman Voyager. They were built by the same builder that's brought us some of the biggest tankers around, the Daewoo Shipbuilding and Marine Engineering Yard. These tankers are relatively new to the scene, only being built in 2019. Both Houston Voyager and Pascagoula Voyager have a deadweight tonnage of 319,000 tons. They're also both 1,102 feet long. San Ramon Voyager is a little bit smaller than the other two, with a deadweight tonnage of 318,000. Given their size, their website boasts that the series are able to help lower the total cost per delivered barrel of crude oil, which can help deliver affordable energy. Well, Chevron claims that this fleet was designed to meet the growing demand for energy, and to do it in a reliable, affordable, and ever cleaner way. Okay, well, these tankers utilize innovative technology, and by increasing the cargo size, they are able to reduce the impact on the environment. Some of the innovations seen in the Chevron Voyager series are advanced propellers, which are used to reduce cavitation, which makes the vessel more efficient, sharper bow design, which helps reduce wave resistance for better efficiency, and exhaust gas cleaning systems, which help reduce the sulfur oxide emissions by up to 80%. So although the Chevron Voyager series may not be the biggest tankers around, they are definitely speaking to the future of oil tankers by integrating cleaner and more efficient technologies. Number 2. Exxon Valdez Alright, for those of us not overly familiar with oil tankers, like I am, the names of the oil tankers on this list are probably not that familiar. However, there's one oil tanker that many of us have probably heard of, if not by name, then by its link to a horrific accident. Exxon Valdez's reputation precedes it as its Alaskan crash in 1986 made headlines worldwide. But although the Exxon Valdez is most famous for the massive environmental disaster it caused, the tanker deserves some attention for its sheer size as well. Now yeah, the Exxon Valdez did run aground in Prince William Sound, Alaska on March 24, 1989, causing a catastrophic oil spill. Because the tanker was so big, it was carrying a lot of oil, so when it ran aground, copious amounts of oil were released out into the ocean. 11 million gallons of oil, to be exact. And the accident happened in an ecologically sensitive area, too. An oil spill is always problematic as it affects marine life, but the location of Exxon Valdez's accident was of particular devastation because there was a lot of highly sensitive and endangered marine life in that location. The effects of the spill were felt as far away as 1,300 miles from the initial crash and caused more than 250,000 seabirds to perish as a result. Along with the birds, 250 bald eagles, 22 killer whales, and 300 harbor seals also lost their lives, as well as a major amount of other sea life. The spill was so disastrous it's been called one of the worst and largest environmental disasters in United States history. But before the tanker caused this historic spill, it was known for its size. Exxon Valdez was launched in 1986 and was 987 feet long. It had a deadweight tonnage of just over 200,000. This tanker was built by the National Steel and Shipbuilding Company, and even though it caused a perilous national disaster, it did have a pretty long service life. 
Even after the disaster, the tanker was put back into service. It wasn't dismantled until 2012. During its long service life, it went by several other names, including Sea River, Oriental Nicety, and the Mediterranean. And although this tanker was one of the largest around and had a very long service life, it isn't the tanker's size nor its years of service it's remembered for. It's for the oil spill. Number 1. The TI Oceania If you want to see the largest oil tanker currently in service in the world, then look no further than the TI Oceania. This tanker is one of the four TI Superclass tankers, and although it shares some similarities with the other members of its fleet, it has one marked difference. The tanker is the biggest oil tanker ship that's currently in operation. This tanker was originally called the Hellespont Fairfax, and it's a ULCC. TI Oceania was built by Daewoo Shipbuilding and Marine Engineering in South Korea, and it was specifically built for the shipping corporation Hellespont, hence its previous name. Today, though, the tanker is owned and operated by Euronav Shipping, as well as managed by Euronav Ship Management, so it goes by the name Euronav Oceania. It's got a gross tonnage of more than 234,000 tons, and it travels at an average speed of about 16.8 knots when it's not fully loaded. When it's fully loaded, it slows down to about 17.5 knots. It also boasts a special feature not present in other tankers. Oceania's bridge wings don't extend to its sides. Oceania is the most famous of the four TI-class super tankers, not just because she's officially the largest, but because she's also racked up a little screen time. TI Oceania, originally named Hellespont Fairfax, has been in service since 2002 and was featured on Discovery Channel's TV show Super Ships. So although all four TI Superclass tankers are massive and similar in size, TI Oceania is the most recognized of the fleet and is the largest currently operational oil tanker in the world. TI Oceania has earned the top spot on this list of the top 15 largest oil tankers in the world. I'll see you next time. Watch our Vehicles playlist for more top 15 videos about amazing vehicles. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best vehicle videos.